Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here on Yahweh's Sabbath day. Greetings to those on the internet or those that might be watching live. We hope you enjoy the messages that go out. Uh, today's message is entitled, Love is the Fullness of the Law. And um, a lot of uh, mainstream interpretation when they see that love is the fulfillment of the law, they interpret that as the doing away with the abolition of or bringing it to an end but I believe that the commandments are the glass half full and love is uh, filled to the brim I'm going to start off in uh, John chapter 12 and verse 48 and over these next uh, few verses we're going to establish that Yeshua did not come to start a new religion. Yeshua is not the founder of Christianity. He does not have his own doctrine. And it's very easy to see, but it's very easily overlooked. In John chapter 12 and verse 48, He that rejects me and receives not my words hath one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. If you do not receive Yeshua's word, that same word will judge you in the last day. I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. The word came from the Father. It's not Yeshua's word. And I know that his commandment is everlasting life. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. It's interesting that he said that the word that he spoke would be a judge at the last day. Let's compare this John chapter 5 and verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Watch this comparison. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Why? Because Yeshua spoke the word of the Father that came through Moses. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 and verse 23, Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. How many witnesses do we need to believe that Yeshua spoke none of his own words? Chapter 7 of John and verse 15. This verse right here over the past few days has really resonated with me and, and just I've been wowed over these next couple of verses. Uh, verse 15, and the Jews marveled, saying, How knowest this man letters, having never learned? How is this man schooled in the scriptures, and he wasn't taught? Verse 16, Yeshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will... He shall know of the doctrine. Let me back it up real quick. The, the two words will here, they have the same root, but they're, uh, they're two numbers different in your Strong's Concordance. But for, uh, for a better understanding, it could be translated as if any man has a desire to do what Yahweh wants them to do. If any man has a desire to do the will of Yahweh, then 
He shall know of the doctrine, whether it be from Yahweh or whether I speak from myself. Did you get that? If you want to do what Yahweh tells you to do, then you will know whether it came from him or whether Yeshua started his own religion. That's big. So how do we define wanting to do his will? I believe it's, it's best defined in the heart of David. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's a man after Yahweh's own heart. He wanted to obey, and it was having that word treasured. That's what that word means, hid. Treasured in his heart. And if you really treasure what Yahweh wants you to do, it is going to be revealed to you that Yeshua came with his Father's doctrine and not his own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. There's only one man on the planet that got it right. Only one. And millions of people claim to follow him and look nothing like him. Nothing. But when asked what was the greatest two commandments. No, excuse me. What is the greatest commandment? They asked, what is the greatest? But he gave them two. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, a lot of mainstream believers out there, if you want to call them believers, they say, there's only two commandments we have to keep. <laughs> and they miss the part where it says on these two hang the rest of the book. I believe that these greatest two have a commentary and it's called the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments have a commentary and it's the Law and the Prophets, the Torah. And the rest of the book is a commentary on that. But this word hang is used seven times in the Messianic or New Testament scriptures. One of which is to have a milestone hung around your neck if you offend one of his children. Four of those references is someone hanging on a stake, on a tree. Those references should give us a good illustration of where the law and the prophets are hanging on those two. They're not done away with. They're attached. They are attached. And what is revealed in the hanging is revealing what it's hanging to. So how do we love Yahweh with all our heart with all our soul and with all our mind. And how do we love our neighbor as, as ourself? What does it look like? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Starting in verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which Yahweh your Elohim commands to teach you, com commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it, that you might fear Yahweh your Elohim, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, you and your son and your son's sons, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Why does he say to your son and to your son's sons? It sounds like something that he wants to go on forever. 
perpetually. So what are these children supposed to do when someone raises up and says, no, we, we don't live like that no more? No, uh, this, this new guy is on the scene. He's changed everything. He did away with all that stuff. That stuff is obsolete. These people are supposed to stand up and say that is an abomination. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that you may increase mightily as Yahweh, Elohim of your fathers, has promised thee in all in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one Yahweh. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, just like the heart of David. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, and you shall bind them for a sign, a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. My word will saturate your life. That is the love of Yahweh. When my word is on your heart so much that it comes from you and that it is seen in everything around you and it is on your mind all the time. That is the definition of loving Yahweh with all your heart. Hallelujah. Chapter 7 of Deuteronomy and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy Elohim. Yahweh thy Elohim hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were numerous than any people for you were the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he swear unto your fathers hath Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yahweh thy Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful El, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. How can we confuse a thousand generations? He keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him. And over and over in scripture, we will see love attached to obedience. The fruit of love is obedience. If you love someone, it will be seen in how you treat them. Verse 10, and repays them that hate him to their face. To destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and statutes and judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass if you hearken to these judgments and keep them and do them. That Yahweh thy Elohim shall keep unto thee the covenant and mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. He promises nothing but blessing. And the world says that the law is a curse that can't be kept. They confuse the verse in Galatians that says he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. See, his law is a curse. No, but the curse of the law was death. And he hung it on a tree. Verse 14, thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And verse 12. And now Israel, 
What does Yahweh thy El require of thee but to fear Yahweh thy El, to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes which I command thee this day. Behold, the heaven of heavens, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahweh thy Elohim, the earth with all that therein is, only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you, above all people as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Ladies and gentlemen, the missing element with his people was having that heart in them to obey. And when the writer of Hebrews recounts the covenant, and he says, you know, if there wasn't a fault in the first, then there wouldn't have been a need for the second. And he tells us that finding fault with them. He did not find a fault with the instructions. He found a fault with the heart of the people that did not have it in them, in themselves to obey. And the new covenant is to have a new heart and a new spirit within you that will cause you to obey. And I can't speak for anyone else, but when I said I surrender all, something new happened. Something different happened. I wanted to be clean. I wanted to be changed. I was given a new heart and a new spirit. And even though I didn't understand his instructions, I wanted to. I had a desire to do his will. And as I continued to seek that out, I learned that the doctrine came from him yeah. and that Yeshua did not start a new religion. Yeah. Verse 17, For Yahweh, your El, is El of Els and Sovereign of Sovereigns, a great El, a mighty and terrible, which regards not persons that he doesn't regard persons that means he doesn't show favoritism and that's why the new testament says there's neither jew nor greek bond or free male nor female for we are all one it doesn't say that the jew doesn't exist it doesn't say that the gentile doesn't exist it doesn't say that male and female doesn't exist that's the verse people use <laughs> there's no such thing as a jew no more that's not what it's saying it's saying he's no respecter of persons he doesn't see your clothes he doesn't see the blood flowing through your veins. We're all on the same playing field and we need to be hid in the Messiah. Old needs to die and we need to be hid in him. And it says that Paul says in Galatians that I no longer live, but the Messiah lives in me. We're supposed to die. Our new identity, our image, the light that's reflecting from us is the image of Yeshua, who's the image of Yahweh. Deuteronomy chapter 13. So what are we supposed to do when someone tries to draw us away from the commandments that we're supposed to teach to our children and our children's children to a thousand generations? What do the scriptures say to do to someone that does that? Verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other mighty ones, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh or El is proving you to know whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall not walk after you shall not walk after Yahweh your El and fear him and keep his commandments. Excuse me. You shall walk after Yahweh your El and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and cleave unto him. That word cleave means be glued, stuck to. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which Yahweh your Elohim commanded thee to walk. If one of these people comes and tries to draw us away from Yahweh or the way that he commanded us to walk, they were worthy of death. Yeah. 
That's how we know Yeshua the Messiah spoke nothing contrary to what the scripture said or he was a sinner worthy of death and he was not fit to be your salvation, your savior. He had to be sinless and the only way to do that according to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, you shall not add to my word which I command you, neither shall you diminish anything from it so that you can keep the commandments. If you add to it or take from it, you cannot keep his commandments. It is a corrupt version, perversion. Leviticus chapter 19. He's about to tell us how to love our neighbor. We've covered how to love the creator, and that's through obedience. But he also has scriptures concerning our neighbor that teach us how to love our neighbor. Leviticus 19 verse 9, And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. Thou shalt not glean thy vineyards, neither shalt thou gather the grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. You shall not steal, neither deal, deal falsely, neither lie one to another. You shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shalt thou profane the name of Elohim. You know, one way that we can profane his name is claiming it, claiming that we follow him, but living a different life. You bring his name to nothing. You disrespect and you honor, dishonor his name when you live like the heathen, but claim that you follow him. When you claim that you're a follower, follow means imitate. When you claim that you imitate Yeshua and don't walk as he walked, you dishonor his name. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear Yahweh thy Elohim. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. That means don't show favoritism. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer amongst thy people. Very uh, prevalent today. Gossips and slanders and talebearers. Even in the, body, in the body at times. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahweh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Rebuking your neighbor is an act of love. When your neighbor is in error and you tell him that he is in error, but it has to be done in love. A lot of people want to rebuke their neighbor with spite and scorn and lashing at the tongue. But everything we need to say, it says that all of our words need to be seasoned with salt for the edification of the hearers. If what's coming out of your mouth is not mingled with love, you are wasting your time. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That verse right there is where Yeshua got it from. After telling us how to deal with our neighbor and taking care of the poor and just common sense issues with your neighbor, not to be a liar, a talebearer, not to put stumbling blocks in front of people, judging with righteousness and not showing favoritism, then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. There's another place which that is also quoted in uh, a little later on in the chapter in verse 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwells with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Let's take this verse just a little bit deeper here. He says when somebody, a stranger, is dwelling amongst you. Well, if they're dwelling amongst his children, then they're supposed to be living the way the children are called to live. 
uh, there will be one law for you and for the stranger that sojourns among you. That's Numbers chapter 15, also Exodus chapter 12. But when this stranger comes and dwells among you and is living the way you were told to live, you will not vex him. And uh, you will love him as yourself. And the example that it gives is because you were a stranger in the land of Egypt. Do you remember how you were vexed and persecuted in the land of Egypt when you were made to be a slave? Do you remember that? Well, don't treat your guests that way and remember how it was for you when you were in Egypt. And on a, a different note, we know that the deeper allegorical meaning behind Egypt was all of humanity is enslaved to sin. And when we come out, we need to remember that people are still there and remember that they needed to be treated with love and respect. And always keep in mind, you know, we have a tendency in this movement, we get enlightened with, with knowledge and revelation and then we look back at where we used to be. We forget that we were once there yeah. and we talk condescending to people. We, uh, the Bible says that knowledge puffeth up. That means it makes prideful. And we always need to remember that the person that hasn't been enlightened yet, it's where we used to be. And we need to speak to them with compassion. And a little love goes a long way. And I, just a, I'm led to share a quick testimony here while we're on this. We took in a, a homeless man a, a few weeks ago. He had, he had lost his, his car. His car had been impounded. He was pretty much just kind of flopping back and forth between houses, between people that he knew. He called. He saw one of our, our advertisements for the ministry, and he told me a story, and I said, all right, we're coming to get you. And... It just blew his mind that a stranger would come and pick up a complete stranger off the street, no questions asked, and he said, how is this possible? How is it possible that, that he does this? And my guy said, that's just what we do. Oh, yeah. That's just what we do. And he, uh, when he heard the things that we, we teach, it, he was blown away because he had been around the church his whole life, been exposed to mainstream stream doctrine, but he was he was digging, but I think, and I believe he's, he's seeing the light just within a few weeks. Uh, he says, you know, the hardest thing for me is to get outside of my tradition because it's stepping on my toes, but everything I'm hearing makes sense. But that act of love touched that man's heart and made such... It made such an impact that he wanted what we had. Yeah, yeah. He knew something was different. And he said, you have rekindled this place. Restoration Ranch Ministry has rekindled something in my heart. And I am so grateful. Yeah. I am so thankful. So when we, when we go out there and we run into people that are still in the world, still in bondage. You either got Egyptian bondage, which is sin, or you got Babylonian bondage, which is a mixture of truth and error. But when we go to these people that are still in bondage, we have to remember that we have been there. And the way we treat them, the way we talk to them, and the way we carry ourselves will speak thousands of more words than what comes out of our mouth just our actions walking as he walked with love John chapter 13 we'll be closing out here in a little bit I got a lot more information but um, John chapter uh, 13 and verse 34 this one actually uh, stood out to me this morning in, in a big way. He said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. And I thought about it. And I was like, that's not a new commandment. What's he talking about? That's not new. We already read that. And then the rest of the verse hit. 
as I have loved you. That's the new commandment. You've always been told to love. I'm telling you to love the way I do. Love sacrificially, unconditionally, because it says in Romans chapter 5 that he proved his love in that while we were still sinners, he died for the wicked. So when we look at our neighbor, don't get mad because your neighbor still has personal defects, character defects, has things that you don't like. It's not your job to change them. It's your job to love them and see through those imperfections and love them the way Messiah loved you. So when you see somebody you don't like or you don't like their actions, stop for a minute and think about the worst thing that you've ever done in your life. Think about the worst crime or sin that you have committed against humanity and remember that Yeshua loved you right there. That's right. And that's what hung on the tree for you. So that's how we need to view our neighbors. <laughs> And verse 35 says, by this, by what? By loving the way that I love you, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. So when people see us, they need to see the love coming out of us. They need to see how we treat each other. And they'll say, that's a follower of Yeshua right there. I can tell by the way they love. <laughs> Chapter 15 and verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And we've already covered where his commandments came from. So when he says, when he says, you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, remember that he said, the words aren't mine, but his sent me. Yahweh is speaking through Yeshua, saying, if you want to be my friends, obey me. And it's been that way from the beginning. When, he, when Yahweh said, let there be light, it was coming out of Yeshua's mouth. I know that's, that's a, a whole other realm of discussion, but it's deep. It's deep. When he said, if any man has seen the Father... If any man has seen me, he's seen the Father. It's always been that way. It's always been that way, brother. Frank covered it earlier. Yahweh's invisible. Four times in the New Testament it says he's invisible and he cannot be seen. The only way Yahweh can be seen is through his reflection, through his image. And his image has been representing him from the beginning. Romans chapter, we're going to close out with about... Just a few more verses here. I know I've got a lot to cover here, but uh, uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. That means he has gotten to the fullness of it, the completion of it. If you love in your neighbor, you have found the end result and what the law was looking for. And then he names commandments. Don't commit adultery, don't steal, uh, don't kill, don't bear false witness, don't covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. You should love your neighbor as yourself. All the commandments he just named was fulfilled and summed up in the statement, love your neighbor as yourself. Love works no ill toward his, towards his neighbor. Love is the fulfilling of the law. If you are truly walking in love, you will not transgress against your neighbor. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Verse, uh, verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled, brought to completion in one word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. We need to be very careful how we treat our brothers. The way we talk will devour. We will consume each other. 
First uh, Peter chapter one verse twenty two. Seeing you have purified your souls, how? In obeying the truth, how? Through the Spirit. Yes, it is the Spirit that causes us to obey. Unto unfeigned love. Unfeigned means without hypocrisy. Loving without hypocrisy. Obeying the truth through the Spirit without hypocrisy. Love without hypocritical love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of Yahweh, which lives and abides forever. That's another verse that they overlook. The word of Yahweh lives and abides forever. Closing out in 1 John. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar or deceived, one of the two. And the truth is not in him, but whosoever keeps his word in him, verily the love of Yahweh is perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And that means to live the way he lived. Verse 9, skipping down to verse 9. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness. He that loves his brother abides in the light. And there's none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where he goes because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Closing in chapter 3 of 1 John, verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a test to know that you have passed from the land of the dead to the land of the living because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of Yahweh because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever hath this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of Yahweh in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. Don't love with your mouth, with your talky-talky. Love in deed and in truth, which is your walkie-walkie. Love you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>